Will God give us what we need? How many of you have asked that question yourself when you're alone in your thoughts and your mind is running randomly and you're like, I need this, I need to get that done, the car need emission test, I need an oil change, I need to pay this bill, that bill, I gotta get the kids some new shoes, I need to do this assignment, I need to do this work test. Will I have the energy? Will I have the strength? As I pray to Yahweh, is he going to send me what I need that will be appropriate to solve this issue? Um, A lot of times we come to that standstill and we're like, wait a minute. Will Yahweh give me what I need? And what would make a person ask a question like that? Like, God can do anything. God is smart. He's intelligent. I say he, but he's a spirit. But God is infinite. Yahweh is infinite. And he's the know-all, be-all. I don't even know. Is there a scripture that says he's the know-all, be-all? Where did I get that from? Because I don't know why that came. That came out of my mouth naturally. So I want to look that up real quick, guys. He's the, let's look it up. I mean, you guys may know where that comes from. But anyway, he's all knowing. So why wouldn't he know what to appropriately give his creation? Did he, is he not the guy that designed the trees and vegetation and fruitation for his creation human beings is he not the guy that designed the disgusting swine pig to clean the earth he knew that the earth would need cleaning as people live on it and carry on generation after generation so he designed something that will clean the earth And he designed creatures and and bottom feeders to clean the ocean. He knows exactly what we need. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, relationally, romantically. Right? He knows everything. Yeah. I don't know if there's a scripture that actually says. Oh, they give me a scripture. It says um, Psalms 147.5. Let's go there real quick just so I can see. Psalm 147.5. I'm going to go to my King James Virgin Holy Bible app. You guys should definitely get it from Google Play. Did I say chapter 147 verse 5 on Psalms? Yeah, we're going to get into that. It's nothing like being able to flip those pages though, right? But I'm just doing it the modern way. Um, hmm. Alright, here we go. Psalms 147. Psalms actually was a good book. I liked it reading Psalms. Even though it had a lot of chapters, I was able to get through it swiftly. Um... Great is our Lord and great and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Amen. I agree. So I believe King David is the writer of the book of Psalms. And in Psalms chapter 147 verse 5, he says, great is our Lord Yahweh. Right? You know, the the name was replaced by Lord, but it's supposed to say great is our, our, our Lord Yahweh, our God Yahweh. And of great power, he is, and his understanding is infinite. Yeah, I agree. And just to narrow this down even more and bring it home, let's de- let's look up the definition of infinite. We're gonna get our study on right now. I hope you don't mind a little study time. You giving me your ear, you lending me your ear. I gotta break it down for you. Um, that means his understanding is limitless or endless. Amen. It, it's 
it's not measurable okay it, it, it ain't measurable like he has infinite mercy on us when God gives he gives infinitely when he gives you wisdom it, it's no limit on that wisdom it's not you're only going to get enough wisdom to last a year or so or to last just in this area of finances but not in this area of parent, parenting no he gives infinitely his understanding according to Psalms chapter 147 verse 5 is infinite so let's go back to the question at hand will God give you what you need why wouldn't he would he know what to give you why wouldn't he know if his understanding is infinite why wouldn't he know if his understanding is infinite brothers and sisters so we're going to dive into that topic a little bit more and you guys can put your thinking caps on i hope you got some relaxation time to sit in a space where you can really meditate on this conversation and um we're going to be here chatting it up but let me play my intro and i'm gonna get back to it guys I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33 Family, we are currently living in critical times and we must prepare for the arrival of the kingdom of Yah. Let's be watchmen of our Savior. You are now listening to Surviving the Last Days Podcast, a Bible-based podcast for kingdom preppers. Remnant of God, let's gather until that last trumpet sounds. Awesome. So, hey, Remnant of God, welcome back to episode 64 of Surviving the Last Days podcast. I am pushing these episodes out. I'm getting these conversations out so that I can nourish your day, nourish a moment of your life. It's a privilege to be a part of you guys' lives as a sister in Christ with you. Um, you may be my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, but I'm here to serve you, nourish you. And, you know, iron sharpens iron. So that's what I want to be. I want to sharpen your faith. Amen. And as I do that, it sharpens my faith as well. So this is the best Bible based podcast in the world. Yeah, you are tuned into it. So that means you're awesome. Okay. Um,. The Most High is what led me and urged me to create this. Um, My spiritual journey has been a unique one. I started out in one religious organization learning some basic Bible truths. And then I moved on up as years go on. You know, you mature in Christ. You learn more. Yah reveals things to you as you give more your attention to him and I was blessed to be revealed a lot of Bible truths and gain a lot of wisdom and now I'm using this platform my podcast platform as a vessel um, to meditate on scriptures with others and to uh, you know speak about scriptures with others and that's what I love doing and I'm glad that you guys have decided to pull up a cheer or pull on some put on your earbuds and listen to me or wash the dishes and listen to me or drive your truck while listening to me whatever you're doing I'm thankful that you're giving you're lending me your ear so I appreciate that one of the things I would like you guys to do um is share the link 
you might be listening on iHeartRadio, you might be listening on Spotify, but I would like you to text somebody this link or post it on your Facebook so your family and friends and even your haters can see um, this episode. And everybody needs God, right? Everybody should learn about God, even the atheists, right? Um, so here's the episode title, guys. Will God be able or will God know what to give you as far as your needs go? Um, some people ask this question and I hear it a lot. You know, I hear that brother saying, I've been praying for a wife for the longest, you know. And I, I get this woman that comes along, but she's a gambler. She got a good heart. She's nice. She's generous, but she's a gambler. Why would the Most High send me that? Well, he's not understanding my request. Is he not understanding my request? Does he not understand what I need? No. The Most High listens to us, right? He sees us and he definitely hears our prayers we have to be careful of the choice words we're saying and we have to be careful what we ask for isn't that an age old saying you know be careful what you ask for because you might have said in your prayer brother i'm requesting a wife uh, that cooks and cleans uh, but you didn't you didn't really pray for a wife that it has overcome her addictions like gambling you know and not to say that the most high will just randomly pick anybody to, to send you sometimes your words are powerful and you manifest with your faith in the holy spirit someone that maybe god didn't really intend for you because i know i prayed for a lot of jobs and i've got them and god didn't really want me at them jobs but he gives us what I, what we want sometimes to prove a point you know i remember one time my son used to talk about the way i managed money and he thought he knew everything and i gave him start giving him an allowance and he saw for the first time how fast money ran through his hands he's like man that money gone i'm like yeah now you see so sometimes you got to give a person what they want just so they can learn a lesson and i don't know if that's truly how the guy operates but it's it's my theory right and that could be one thing but god always knows exactly what we need but more than likely we don't agree with what Yahweh wants to give us amen for whatever reason we tend to, as humans we tend to always want to go the opposite of what we want we want we want the ladies we want the man with the six packs you know we want the man with the six pack Lord knows that he can't give us a man with a six pack because the men with some men with the majority of the men with the six pack don't have a God in their life you know they they out here running reckless they got all kind of problems you know but we, all we got on our main focus is a six pack you know what i'm saying so you got to be careful what you pray for and sometimes your father gonna maybe give it to you just so you can learn a lesson or sometimes the devil can swoop on in and give you something to occupy you and make you think you found what you've been praying for but that's another story um but will god know how to give you what you need absolutely the scriptures say he has infinite understanding and also if we go to matthew chapter 7 verse 11 i'll head to my king james virgin bible app on google play that i downloaded to my phone it says if ye then oh y'all might can hear the audio i always try to read stuff but look i got an audio on here i don't like this audio voice i don't i do not like this audio voice guys let's see if it'll play because i thought it just supposed to play um
What is wrong with that? But anyway, I, I guess I can't play it. But I heard the little voice. Did y'all hear it? Because at first it had a funny sound of voice. Judge not, that he be not judged. But with what oh, it's a male judged, voice on here. Be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not okay, the anyway. that is in thine own eye? How Let me read it because I gotta turn this off because that ain't what I'm looking for anyway. But anyway, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? And how do we define good things? Not according to our definition, according to the Most High's definition of what is good things for us specifically. So, will the Most High give you what you need? Yes, he understands exactly what you need more than you. He created you and he understands this system of things more than you and what avenues to go down more than you. You're new here. Remember, he's been here over thousands and thousands of years. He, he was the first. There is no one before him. He's Alpha and Omega. Can I get an amen? Okay, so he he knows more than you, and and Christ even says, I believe here, or Matthew writes that if you being with sin, he says being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Well, how much more shall your father who created you in his likeness? And he's in heaven. Give good things to those of you who ask him. So we just have to know and count on the God that God that Yahweh is going to give us good things, and he's going to send. He's going to answer our request with the appropriate uh, resolution. It may not be a resolution that we like. It might be not what we define as good. But who's more right? It would be our father, Yahweh. He knows what's best for us. Like they say, father knows best. Mothers knows best. You know. So, will he be able to give you what you want? Absolutely. There's no confusion when Yahweh hears you talking to him. You know, you might sound all over the place sometimes with your prayers but he understands exactly what you're going through he understands what you're dealing with physically mentally emotionally spiritually relationally you know he understands it all and he's got the appropriate resources for all of it he's got the appropriate plan for all of it and the bible tells us his ultimate plan and we already know his how he how his plan was brought forth through the Messiah, the plan to redeem us and give us back everlasting life, is, which is what Satan, Hasatan, the father of the lie, stole from us originally. He redeemed us by Christ's ministry and sacrifice on that on Mount Calvary, um, making atonement for our sins. And we were able to be redeemed and get everlasting life because that's what we needed, and that's what that was the appropriate resolution for what for even Adam's downfall. So right now we're in this cap, cap capitalist society. Uh, some say the land of captivity, this modern day Babylon or this modern day Egypt. We're here now, guys, and we're coming across challenges, right? As the Most High, it had inspired the scriptures to say, perilous times will be here. He's aware. He's aware of what we're going to go through. That's why he, he, he led the Messiah to be led by the Holy Spirit to say, endure until the end. Because he knew that we would have to endure. I mean, the people back then, in uh, Christ's era, 
amen the, the year of our lord era they were a hot mess you know the sadducees and the pharisees and uh the way they acted towards the messiah and his disciples even after his death the, what the apostles had to go through being killed in a most horrific way all because they wanted to deliver the correct gospel hey man um you thought they were in troubling times we're gonna be in some troubling times um but that's not to fear monger anybody and, and that's not to you know make you apprehensive or afraid what it is it is to do is make you happy because the more this system crashes that means our redemption is near and but while we're here best believe our father in heaven we can rely on to give us the appropriate things we need you know um yah has already put things in place to help us you know for the sisters and brothers that need utility assistance there are man-made organizations that have made a program to assist people with uh, first-time home buyers assistance, down payment, down home first-time home buyers down payment assistance, and certain there's certain county programs that help with um people's water bill, people's uh, light bills, uh. There are certain charitable organizations that help people get scholarship money. Um, there are all type of vessels that the Most High Holy Spirit works through. Right? Um, he got to complete a work in this realm of things since this is where his people live. You know? And sometimes that's through a man-made organization. You know? But we, our job is to do the relying on the most high Yahweh, not lean on our own understanding and understand that scripture in Matthew chapter seven, verse 11, you being evil know how to give your kids good gifts. So why wouldn't your father in heaven know how to give you good gifts? He, he does give us good gifts. A lot of times we're distracted and overlook them. You know, but God's gifts aren't worldly gifts. God's gifts are permanent. They're like infinite wisdom, like I said, infinite intelligence. Uh, sometimes he gives you business ideas. Sometimes he gives you an idea for a podcast like he gave me. Um, you know, God's gifts are long. They, they serve a longevity purpose. And, you know, I heard someone say one time that they were going through a struggle and they had to talk to the case manager about food stamps. And um, they were getting asked a lot of questions. They got very nervous and somehow they said something wrong. They got their food stamps cut off. Um this person started to really fall apart you know they because when you depend on a government like that um and you feel like the government is you kind of treat the government more like your god than the actual yahweh in heaven uh you're gonna get disappointed but if you always depend on yah regardless of who's in presidential power of who's making decisions about food stamps if you depend on yahweh ultimately you're gonna get what you need whether it's through that agency or another agency but she was in so much distraught that she even said you know why is god leaving us here to suffer like this and you know she started to really think and i get it when your body is deprived of minerals and vitamins and you really dependent on these food stamps you know your mind can f physically start to defeat you um that's why again i really like to announce on this podcast that if you can order your seeds from amazon your your gardening seeds 
your fruits and vegetable seeds start planting this this summer um start it please because guys we we really need to do that because we see now these systems are crashing we're not able to depend on these pantries sometimes they don't these pantries are not as reliable you know they say they they're running out of funds they don't have they run out of food too um they only can serve a certain number of people in a line uh we, we can't depend on the the federal government for food stamps state government for food stamps because they could they cut you off when they want to or something there's a glitch in the system where you can't use a food stamp um i really think we got to become self-sufficient one of the things that i'm doing or a few things that i'm doing to become self-sufficient i'm not going to these I'm just trying to learn to do everything on my own. I've always been a, quite an independent person and I like doing things on my own. I really like I enjoy podcasting, being able to start up this podcast project and close it when I want to and make as much money as I want to make off of it by producing as many podcasts as I want to. It's not controlled by anybody. I do it on my own as a creator, right? Um so what how i have been becoming self-sufficient is i've been creating like i said podcasts for earning income i have been uh shoot i use turbo tax to file my own taxes um I, i i use them to help me you know it's a really a good good um platform to file taxes because it really does give you step by step on how to do it 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 literally coaches you along the way it's like hard to miss you know so i file my own taxes um the yahweh has given me wisdom to understand deductions and taxes i didn't go never go to no tax class but i understand it quite well because of my father in heaven has given me the understanding level and the mind to understand concept things concept terms about um filing taxes and finances um i have bought my gardening seeds from amazon um what else um i do my own hair i don't go anybody to do my hair i learn natural ways to make homemade hair conditioners through natural fruits um like you know avocados for hair conditioner uh coconut milk for hair conditioner I learned to make uh, homemade cleaning products so I don't have to always go to the grocery store or some department store to get cleaning products. I can literally make a, a concoction of my own, keep it in a big gallon and pour it into small bottles and use it for long lasting days. Um, you know, I'm, I'm learning to stockpile meaning that i'm going to buy in bulk soon right now i don't buy in bulk i I might buy a few bottles of ketchup or something like that but i want to actually buy in bulk like the restaurants do you know and start stocking um stocking up on a lot of things that that we need you know to to survive these last days um and i don't i'm I'm a kingdom prepper i i like to watch a lot of youtube prep videos um but yeah that was a sidebar note but yeah being self-sufficient learning to be self-sufficient can help us not go down that path of depending on something other than god and then it failing us right so only thing we want to do is ultimately depend on god we don't want nothing in no middle men right we don't want nothing in the middle that makes us believe that it's more reliant than our father in heaven yahweh it's not it's not guys so that's what i wanted to um that's what i wanted to just drive home to you guys is that um you know our father we should depend on ultimately and only there are other systems in place that we can use but they are not our end all be all god is our end all be all yahweh el 
what is it Adonai El Roy the guy who sees us El Shaddai Abba Amen the God that I am that I am Yahweh Yara <laughs> that's the place that Abraham called where he was about to sacrifice his son but God provided an animal for him he called that place Yahweh Yara um, because the Lord provided so and that's what that means the Lord will provide so um, when you get to that point where you get frustrated you feel defeated you don't have any backbone support because you know a lot of our families aren't the most spiritually strong a lot of our friends aren't the most spiritually strong and then we take in all these other distractions that weaken our faith like miscellaneous stuff post on youtube and twitter and facebook and miscellaneous um tv shows that don't nourish our faith you know um most of the time people have to really really seek out some faith fulfilling things like a podcast or a book or to to build their faith you know because it's hard to find that nourishment these days everybody seems to be going one way you know like they say the path the road to damascus right it, it's not it's not a wide um road the road to damascus I am getting better too, guys. I know on my last podcast, I mentioned that I had the sniffles and a cracky voice. I feel a lot better. Um, right now, I'm sipping on some lemon water with some elderberry and burdock root in it. I love my herbs. If you guys are, if you are an herbalist and you want me to broadcast your herbal shop, on my podcast, email me at surviving the last days at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, so will God know exactly what to send you or what to give you in regards to your specific request? Yes. It's not for you to figure it out. You don't need to write down one plus one and two plus two. Well, if this is this way and this is, you don't figure out the strategy. You just pray, send it on up to God, and let it go. Just let it go. Don't think about it. Don't talk about it. And the next time you do speak about it, you only reiterating that you're anticipating. On receiving that answer to your request or that resolution to your request but you not you not thinking about it up you not up all night thinking about it you're not up dreading the day the way you know you're not up saying woe is me I don't know how I'm gonna get this resolved you not already sent your prayer up that's like somebody turning in a, uh, a order you know how you put your order in online on Door, DoorDash, but you keep calling up to the restaurant like y'all y'all gonna give it to me, or y'all really gonna give it to me? They look at you, girl. They probably cancel your order. <laughs> the people probably cancel your order. You put in that order, you leave it alone. You don't worry about it. It's coming. You don't you don't be going out. You don't put in that order. Uh, and then one second later, you looking out the window, you looking out the door, you going outside, looking down the street. You trying to figure out what well, did they flip it over at 2:45 and did they did they uh, bake the buns and you're not look, thinking about the strategy and how they gonna get it done and how they gonna package it up. You just waiting on your meal because you put in that order. You have faith that them people gonna deliver your food. They gonna make your food and they gonna deliver your food. You have that much faith in DoorDash and them restaurants. My God, have, have a little more faith for Yahweh, please. And, when you put in that request, when you put in that order, treat it like that. When you put in your request for God, treat it like how you put in your request at DoorDash. You you put in that request and you let it be. Okay? That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying, guys. Let me take a sip of my uh, lemon water. 
ain't the best tasting, honey. Oof. But it'll get the job done. That's all that matters. If you guys like visuals, you can follow my you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Surviving the Last Days TV. I think you could just put in hashtag surviving the last days TV with no spaces and I should come up. I just post little short videos and visuals of Bible characters and stuff like that. Stuff like that, excuse me. You know, there are many things that we pray for. And we're like, man, I don't know if I can get that because that seems like it'll be hard to get. Some things just look impossible to us, right? But what does Luke 137 says? Hmm. Let's look it up. I'll head to my KJV Bible app. No need to grab y'all's. I'll read it off to you. I'm on yeah, I'll go to KJV. I got the new world new world translation too. But I'll just go to KJV. Say Luke. Um, Luke 137. Was it Luke 137 that I... I got a poster of it. It gotta be Luke 137. Okay. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Come on now, church. <laughs> what does it say? For with Yahweh, nothing shall be impossible. Do we got to go to definition of nothing? What does nothing mean? Sometimes you got to look up the definition because my people didn't always graduate grammar school. So let's look up the definition of nothing. Let's ask Google. Define nothing. Not anything. No single thing. Amen? That means nothing is impossible for God. Absolutely nothing. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That Anything that you can think of, Yah can manifest it. The Holy Spirit power that Yah owns can manifest it. So all this human thinking and in our own carnal minds when we praying and we limiting our prayers. Amen. We're limiting our prayer requests because we think, oh, man, that's impossible. I don't think I could do that because this ain't happening in 10 years. So I don't know if I could do that. You got women out here that they had that been told they can't even have children that they were barren. And, and they just live that way for 10, 15 years. And then all of a sudden they get pregnant. Because why? Because with God. Nothing is impossible. Amen. All you got to do is pray. All you got to do is pray and put in the works. Because faith without works is dead. And sometimes your works is not, you know, God doesn't put too much on us. You know, your works is not um, what he's requesting of us. It's not a strenuous task that we can't do. So the works that go along with your faith could be simple. You know, it could be acknowledging. Just waking up and acknowledging say, hey, God, I'm waiting on it. I'm anticipating it. I know it's coming. Thank you in advance. It could be something as simple as that little profession. You know, it could be physical activity work. Sometimes our prayer requests come with physical activity. That could be meditating and stretching. You know, that could be fastening. You know, faith without works is dead. But when you put in those works and showing activity that you're preparing and that you're believing, your behavior is showing that you're already operating like you're getting this gift. Just like if somebody called you today and said, hey, I'm coming over and bringing you some, um, we're going to make dinner today. We're going to make some gumbo. Are you not going to get the pots and pans and the spoon that you like to use out? I like them big wooden spoons for my soups and and sauces and stuff. Like, are you not going to get it in preparation? We finna cook gumbo. I said, I'm coming over. I'm about to bring me a bag, a bag of items. 
and we're gonna make some homemade gumbo you're not gonna get the kitchen prepared and get out the silverware or whatever you you know pots and pans we're gonna use hey amen act like i'm gonna come over because i said i'm coming over you know i said i said we're gonna come i said i'm going to come over and make some gumbo with you i need the measuring cups already out i need the skillets and the pots already out I need the I got the items right so when you send your request to God you need to have no doubt that it's gonna be that he's gonna be able to do it first of all that he's able and then you need to have no doubt that he will pick the appropriate way to answer your request and then you need to act like and behave like it's already coming because it is as long as it's in harmony with Yah's will and let's keep that in mind too that we ultimately want God's will to be done in our life not our own will we have to disown ourselves and 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 get behind Yahweh because he knows best for us ultimately okay so we have to humble ourselves and what we might be praying for, we might not be ready for, or it might not be good for us. We could be praying for that man down the street, ladies. We like, I see him every day. He ain't got no wife. He be, he be, um, you know, <laughs> cutting his grass every Sabbath. He ain't supposed to be cutting grass on the Sabbath, though. But yeah, that's another story. <laughs> we about to go into the Sabbath right now. All oh, praises. But yeah, but you might be saying, I, I'm praying for that man. He looks good. I like him. He way, he nice. You know, but you're praying for this man to get into a dating shit with you, a courtship with you, and you don't know really nothing about this man. You just know he's cute. But Yahweh knows everything about him. And Yahweh knows his battles, and Yahweh knows if that's going to be a bad effect on your life or a negative effect in, life, in your life. You could really want this man and like his job and like his house and car and and like what you're seeing on the outside but but you don't know that that's not good for you and you might get a little mad and a little agitated at yahweh because that prayer request is not in harmony with yah's will but you have to humble yourself and submit and say you know what yah i know you always got something better for me and some more fitting for me and i trust that you will give me your best amen it takes some humility it takes some submission as we are supposed to be as servants of Yahweh so y'all gotta you know we gotta understand that when we're praying we're anticipating a result of course but ultimately we want that result to come directly from the most high's will we don't want no short-term results or lessons that we have to learn from we want the real deal holy feel you know even if you're praying for a new apartment or you're praying to get approved for a mortgage or something like that you want to rely on yahweh you don't want to think about all the laws and policies they said and requirements that lenders said you got to have you want to know what yah says amen because there are events in life where people didn't got approved for mortgages with income that wasn't so appealing all right and they didn't even have a down payment on their homes they went and got a home buyer down payment assistance from their county took a class and obtained that assistance and got in the um got into a home so you know everybody's road is not the same but we all lead to the same de destination sometimes and we should all know that because we got people that don't have high school diplomas that lead to being very um financially successful and then we got people that do have high school diplomas that lead to be sometimes financially dis successful so they get the, to the same destination but the roads are different amen the roads are different sometimes and you go on your specific road that is unique to you for whatever reason that you have to go down it you know um let me take another sip of my lemon water because i feel like my mouth been dry all right 
So there shouldn't be a question. Can our father give you what, uh, what's up? Wait a minute now. What? I hope you guys can still hear me because um, I didn't click on something on my headset. But uh, hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, so there shouldn't be a question of whether our father in heaven is able to give us the appropriate resources for our request. You know, it's like asking somebody at, at, at Popeye's chicken for some chicken and they give you um, some catfish. Uh, this is a chicken place. I ordered chicken. Why would you give me catfish? Now, come on now. They didn't understand the request. But the most high God always understanding because Psalms 147, chapter 147, verse 5 says his understanding is infinite. So he understands your request more than you do. And you don't have to limit him on what you're requesting because he can do above all. Okay? He can do exceedingly and abundantly. And the only reason why we're not getting most of the things that we want is because there are demonic forces that block us, you know, and that we have to battle against. And, and the only way you can battle is if you pray. And you got to pray a lot, too. Um, but I think that's the scripture too. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Y'all know that scripture. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. For we wrestle. I got this heat on my feet. It feels so good. So right now I got a little office space in a room that I use to um, as a podcast studio. But I'm anticipating, amen, to get in a new home space where I can have a uh, a more spacious room and have that room, all of that room donated to just podcasting. Like put a, some pictures in it, have a, a new office desk a new office chair um uh, probably even a new laptop um maybe some portraits of uh famous people um where they could be famous biblical people child but yeah that's my that's what I'm anticipating. That's my one of my prayer requests, you know, to get in my home space. And I actually have been praying for a deadline, too. I don't know if y'all like to put that in y'all prayers, but I do like to put in a deadline just for the heck of it. I know y'all going to move on his own time, but I I like to, re, you know, reiterate and try to make y'all remember, hey, I've been waiting since da-da-da-da. I've been asking for this since da-da-da-da. Can you for you know give her mercy on me and speed it, the process up to this deadline you know i mean you gotta really negotiate with your father sometimes yeah you know he's your father like you talk to your real father and you try to compromise and all this stuff like yeah father i'm trying to trying to speed it up lord but anyway let me look at this up for we wrestle not against flesh and blood now I don't know why that KJV Bible. Oh, it's cha- it's Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter six, verse twelve. Now I don't know why that KJV Bible app won't uh, play the audio for me. I have no idea why it won't play the audio for me. It sounds like I can't click on it to play the audio. And I be want to say my voice sometimes when I'm reading these scriptures, y'all. So let's go here to Ephesians. What I say? Um There we go. Y'all can notate this if y'all got a notepad app on your phone, just write these scriptures down. But this one I'm going to be able to play though. This is the um New World Translation. 
Here we go. Because we have a struggle, not against blood and flesh, but against the governments, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the wicked spirit forces in the heavenly places. For this reason, take up the complete suit of armor from God, so that you may be able to resist in the wicked day, and after you have accomplished everything, to stand firm. Amen. Stand firm. So yes, like I said before, a lot of times we're, we're working against um, wicked spirit forces in the heavenly places. That means in in the outer realm, the 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 dimensions above the earth. You know, these are real demons, Satan's friends and family. <laughs> Shoot, that we're working against, and the only way you can fight against it is through prayer and like. The scripture says to put on the complete suit armor of God. Um, and I just go to war in prayer, you know, daily, guys. I go to war in prayer because I understand that 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 Satan has got a mission, and it's to withhold our things, it's to withhold our stuff, it's to withhold our inheritance, amen. But we gotta pray against those demonic forces. And sometimes those demonic forces work through people. And those people are in our close proximity. And that's why you have to pray to be able to get away from those people. You know, um, during these last days, we really don't need to spend any time wasted on in front of people that aren't glorifying the name of Yahweh. That aren't preaching the gospel. That aren't living the kingdom lifestyle. That aren't kingdom preparing. Um it's really a uh, it's really a um we can't be around them at all so if they got demons they battling and you were close by them them demons gonna jump on you and your life and your stuff that you requested holding your stuff back you know so absolutely we gotta not be around those people you know but um let's play it again so just in case y'all didn't hear it correctly I'm going to play it again. Because we have a struggle, not against blood and flesh, but against the governments, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the wicked spirit forces in the heavenly places. For this reason, take up the complete suit of armor from God, so that you may be able to resist in the wicked day. And after you have accomplished everything, to stand firm. Stand firm. Praise stand God. Stand firm, therefore, with the belt of truth fastened around your waist, wearing the breastplate of righteousness, and having your feet shod in readiness to declare the good news of peace. Besides all of this, take up the large shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the wicked ones' burning arrows. Also, accept the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, that is, God's Word, while with every form of prayer and supplication, you carry on prayer on every occasion in spirit. Yep, carry on prayer on every end, occasion. Stay awake, constantly making supplication in behalf of all the holy ones. Pray also for me. Yep, you got, you got to pray. There's no way around it. We got to pray. And, so, and yes, our prayer includes requests, you know, uh, but most of the time we're praying a way for a prayer way to banish those demons, demonic forces in our life that's attacking us mentally, spiritually, that's putting strongholds and addictions on our life, that's causing disruption in our life and causing chaos in our life, you know. I still don't know why I can't play, um, why I can't highlight something. And then press play on on a King James version. That's weird. Cause I sure be wanna um play that. Oh, maybe this ain't the right app I got that plays it. Cause I got another KJV version app on my phone, but it includes the Apocrypha. It includes the Apocrypha too. So. Like, let me look up that one and 
because someone else told me about this one and it, it includes the apocrypha so i liked it it like you got first elders and second elders But let's look up, um, wait a minute now, how can I not get, let's look up Luke 1, 37 and see if we can play that, because I think this is the one that had the funny voice on it, if I'm not mistaken, it had a funny voice, maybe it was the woman's voice, I don't know. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, See, I don't like her voice. It sounds so computerized. Ain't that some y'all? I don't like her voice. I want to change her voice. On these Bible apps, I be picky like that. I be want to change the voice. At least to a male voice, child. I don't be. Her voice is uh, annoying. I don't think it'll let me change it to, um, it says that it could change from male to female, but I think I just got a female virgin on here, and I don't really like her voice, <laughs> I don't like her voice, guys, that's neither here nor there, though, <laughs> I got another app that I can play the audio scriptures on, so we're good there. Let me take another sip of water. But you know, we um we have a chat. Well, I have a chat. Oh no, I think they took away the chat. Start broadcasting live on the chat with it. Because you used to be able to chat live. While you're going live. But I think they took away the chat. So, um, the only way you guys to be able to chat with me, um, like if I was live on them, is if I was on Facebook live or YouTube live or um, Instagram live or something like that you guys will be able to chat with me which I haven't figured out if I'm going to go Instagram live or would I use YouTube live I really don't know it's something I gotta really make up my mind on um but that that'll come to me i i think the holy spirit will lead me to the right platform to go live on um but for the most part um i, I you know i really don't like being on instagram like i told y'all in the last episode because instagram you could get on there and then something pop up on your phone that's very inappropriate like but youtube i can go straight to live you know and ain't no video gonna pop up or nothing if i don't go to it so i might do live stream on youtube just so i can limit more t limit more of my time from instagram because baby like i know yesterday instagram was down i ain't know what was wrong with it i ain't even try to figure it out and then today I can get on the app, but it ain't nothing popping on the app. Ain't nobody sending me no messages. There's no engagement, except for with my reels that I post on there um, about the podcast or scriptures, you know. Other than that, ain't nothing, Instagram ain't serving me at all. So I, I possibly can go live on YouTube. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, that's probably what I will do. I probably just go live on YouTube. But anyway, so will God be able to give us the appropriate things for our request? Absolutely. Not a doubt in my mind that He understands. 
okay and he knows exactly what is suitable for our request more than we know and all we gotta do is trust not doubt not second guess pray keep faith and anticipate that it's coming and, and behave as such amen like get it prepared prepare yourself for it um like i said i'm i'm requesting to be able to move by may 31st um i i'm not really requesting to relocate even though i would like to relocate um but i don't want to relocate until i have like a husband or something i because i don't want to really <laughs> I'm not one of the people that like to move halfway across the country with no family and nothing like that. Even though I trust God and everything like that, I, I really do admire some type of social companionship life. So I'd rather wait on that until I have a husband. And maybe the most I might send me double. Hey man, he might send me a new home and a husband May 31st, you know? But that's my, when I want to, um, basically my request when i want to be moved out of the current home that i'm in into a new home where it's going to be more spacious and with the new with the new set of income amen not like income that i previously made over the years but this will be a new source of income that purchases this space the new home space and I know that rent is high over the United States. I think they said the average rent in the United States is about fourteen hundred dollars. Um, so y'all, we gotta have a job. We gotta have a DoorDash. We gotta have a Uber Eats. We gotta do side hustles and podcasts and all that on the side. But uh, you know, um, I think when you tap into your gift and you make earnings from your gift naturally that has no limit on it when it comes to earnings so i feel like when i tap into my gift of podcasting that can literally serve as a, a rent payment or you a utility payment or um a grocery bill payment you know um because there's no man in control of <laughs> In a sense, there's no man in control of me putting out my pockets. Like, I do it when I want to. And, you know, I'm essentially not working for nobody. I mean, I'm on a, someone else's platform, a major corporation's platform. Uh, but, essentially, nobody can fire me from it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can get on here whenever I want to, however I want to, no matter what I say. Unless I say something that's completely ferocious and they just get me banned all together. But um, I actually think podcasting is a really great way to make extra earnings. And if you want to make it a full-time income, you can. You just need to put in that full-time energy and work, right? I mean, we have a lot of podcasts and they are very niche-based. Um... You got the Joe Rogan podcast. You got a million dollars worth of game. You got Drink Champs. Um, I think Angie Martinez got a podcast. I'm not sure she do. I know Angela, you got one. But these are all worldly podcasts. I don't know any Bible-based podcasts that are really popular or any Christian-based podcasts that are really popular. But you may, you may know some. I know you, I watch um, Better Together. It's a Christian-based talk show slash could be podcast on youtube um i watched that um and that's pretty excuse me i didn't chap my uh headset but that's pretty cool I, and that's a good content that they have but i think it's a good side hustle you know i started podcasting in 2015 and it was nowhere near at this level that it is now where now you have over 10 million podcast episodes on one platform like a lot of people are searching for podcasts it's like they would search for a book or they would search for a youtube video like people like podcasts you know we i think as humans we like intimate conversations uh we like 
chatting it up we like discussing things um back in the day you used to go over a friend house uh, four or five of your friends will pull up y'all play cards y'all all talking chatting um discussing different things from politics to relationships and, and and i like stuff like that where you can sit back have some um snacks and play cards and play music and all this stuff well now we can turn to podcasts for intimate conversations because a lot of times we we, we live an isolated life now you know we live in these the way the system is set up we're now they, they take up all of our time we can't get around folks we can't get around our friends every day some of us some of us are on the entrepreneurship journey too so that's what leads us to spend a lot of long time because maybe our circle isn't really on an entrepreneurship journey and it can be very lonely on the entrepreneurship on entrepreneurship journey some of us are stay-at-home moms stay-at-home dads military spouses and we have a lot of time to ourselves so we have that freedom to you know start up a podcast or listen to a podcast um everybody's not in the hustle bustle work world working at nine to five grinding some of us have made income uh, other ways and uh, we own our time you know but anyway i just wanted to put out this episode because i thought it was very important because a lot of people seem to just have a a confusion about is, is god gonna give me the appropriate thing i need like you know like saying god slow or something you know yahweh isn't slow yahweh understands us completely he has he is the owner of intelligence amen he created us in our minds he created men to be able to make planes but they first had to copy off of his creation birds amen so yeah he knows exactly what you need and he knows exactly what is fitting to resolve your needs um so you can trust that for sure um there's either you trust him or you don't there's no in between um the waiting process can make you uneasy i will admit the waiting process can be long to us but we gotta know that while we're waiting we're putting in work wherever we need to put in we're we're moving we're being we're being the mover and shaker on the chessboard right we gotta put in our work put in our steps but let our steps be directed of course by the holy spirit so i'm gonna go ahead and sign off guys episode 64 has been completed thank you for coming to listen to the best bible po- bible based podcast in the world yeah in the world on planet mars venus pluto all of that good stuff okay and listen to my other episodes if you haven't went and researched my other past episodes because you can see kind of the growth and how production has developed and uh look at some of the other content and then feel so free to copy the link and post it on your facebook twitter email somebody you know text it to someone and don't and don't forget to love god trust god love god with your whole heart your whole soul and your whole mind as the scripture says remember the god stay prepared keep seeking the kingdom amen and keep on asking because he what what does it say the scripture say keep on asking and it will be given to you i'll praise to the most high god i will see you guys next time bye bye